Well, Joe Carres, all Victor Osman decision to be made by Arsenal soon, and we're going to be taking you down to Sporting Lisbon, according to what Fabrizio Romano is really telling us. Lydian Turam, it's a here we go, and obviously, Dit Mahama, and has come out and obviously stated Cristiano Ronaldo for obviously powering, you know, yesterday, you know, during the game that saw Portugal go through to the quarterfinals against Slovenia after he missed out a penalty in the extra time. Welcome to this channel. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Rock and David is my name. I hope you guys are really having fun. So late, obviously go ahead and obviously do the needful and obviously support this channel to the fullest. The Muslims, Barak Laufikum, the Christians, we cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And let's obviously get into the story coming in the from Fabrizio Romano. For Victor Jokaris, Sporting still want the release clause. They want a package of 100 million euros. This is an expensive deal. And this is why Arsenal have shown interest. And this is why Arsenal have shown interest in the recent months. But at the moment, are still not advancing. We know that time. We know that times in the market, the price can change. In June, you have a price, and then in July, in August, it can change. So, for both Jokares and Osimen, the situation is quite interesting. Let's see what Arsenal will decide to do. You get? Let's see what Arsenal will decide to do. Right? So, this is why I'm going to have to come up with the title that the decision of Victor Osman and Jokaris to Arsenal is yet to be decided. And when you look at Jokaris, 100 million euros, um, Victor Osman, 120 million euros, and Arsenal is still wanting to see how things are really happening in there for you. And they are hinting on how um, they are hinting on how a price can obviously fluctuate in all these months june july and august but i believe for a price to obviously increase a lot it's when the transfer window really gates to august if arsenal wants to hate this deal's end of this deal done they have to see to it that they do the due diligence here of convincing sporting lisbon or napoli before july 31st when they enter into august remember it's very hard obviously getting replacements and right now Teams will be having what you call ample time to come up and obviously make a decision. But Arsenal's problem is that they are not willing to pay that huge amount of money. And what is that huge amount of money? It's um, it's um, 100 million euros for Jokaris, telling to one telling to 85 million pounds, and. 120 million euros for Victor Osman, telling to 106 million pounds. Now, <clears throat> Arsenal are really wanting this too, and they feel like they should get in one, but the money is really too much. And their budget of Arsenal is close to 200 million pounds. You get? And it looks like they've gone ahead to understand that maybe we need a center forward in to obviously kill off very many games this season and see to it that we obviously score very many goals and we are waiting for a decision that is said to be made any time from now for Victor Jokaris or Osimen. But they're really tricky deals and I think Arsenal having a different plan altogether, you know? And that's why they haven't gone ahead to go huge for these players because all these players aren't playing in the Euros. Right? And Victor Osimen is on a holiday. Jokaris is on a holiday. And all is set for Arsenal to decide on who to sign. And I would love to pose this question to everyone watching in through. Who do you think Arsenal should get in? Victor Jokaris or Victor Osimen? You know, they all have a Victor onto their names. Because it looks like Arsenal is charged and Fabrizio is confirming to us that Arsenal is interested though nothing is really advanced and things aren't advanced because of the money now they will try to negotiate but will these clubs obviously feel like it's okay to negotiate with these teams i doubt napoli is a hard side to negotiate with and i told you the only reason i see napoli bends law 
is because of the weekly wages of Victor Osimhen. <laughs> that is it. But I don't really see them bending law because they don't want to set a narrative that we can negotiate or knock down the release clause that we've gone ahead to put in the contract. I think they won't be willing to do that. They might obviously give Victor Osim in another season, you know, though he won't be happy, but Antonio Conte will try to obviously do something special in there to convince him. Then, if he hits the ground running and scores very many goals for the side of Napoli, then they might obviously get in the amount of money they want because he's just 24-25, right? But I worry a little bit for Sporting Lisbon because of the age of Victor Jokaris. He has just gone ahead to make 26 years of age. And um, unless otherwise he has the same season of scoring very many goals like he did in the previous season, that's when I think his market will obviously stay at 100 million euros. And I don't know the length of this some of he of this release clause of Jokares. But if you are this team of Sporting Lisbon, I think you sell Jokares. You bought him on a cheap and you are making almost times how many times? Times 60. You know? The amount of money you bought him from a Coventry City when he really signed for your club. So I believe something should be done and that something should obviously come in through from the man himself. Um known as Jokares, he should push and obviously tell Sporting Lisbon that why are you denying me an opportunity? You bought me on a cheap, you're making a profit of like 60 million pounds and why don't you let me go? You know? And to put all that aside, a huge question goes to the Arsenal board. Why are they taking this long to obviously get these deals done and dusted? You know? What is Arsenal up to? Because even right now, Arsenal is only pointing. You get? Arsenal is only pointing at players and they haven't gone ahead to come up and really make a decision on which player for them to sign and not to sign. So, it is really very worrying. If at all you've been following the previous summer transfer windows of Arsenal, they've obviously gone ahead to go hard and really sign players. Remember, even when the Euros were there, they had to bring in Lokonga, they had to bring in Nuno Tavares, you know. Um, I think even Benjamin White came in through. So, there is something that I need to obviously get from my sources from Arsenal on why they are taking this long to obviously call these deals off. Sorry to really uh, sanction these deals, you know. But a decision of Jokares or Jumares is said to be made. They will either choose one or not even choose on any of the two. And they will pull out and say, all right, let's obviously go and really do something different altogether. Now, Fabrizio Romano has gone ahead to sound a here we go of another player from Nice who goes by the names of um, Turam to Juventus. Here we go. Verbal agreement in place between clubs on 20 million euros. Deal plus add-ons up to 25 million euro package. Contract until June 2029 agreed and confirmed. Documents to be exchanged today and tomorrow. Final technical steps before medical tests. So, He's a very good young player, plays in the midfield, plays a CDM as a box-to-box -box midfielder. He has gone ahead to join the side of Juventus. Fabrizio Romano added that medical tests for Fethren Toram as new Juventus player could take place this week if clubs will be ready here with the process to exchange documents. Salary will be around 2.5 million euros net per season. Juventus see Toram as an excellent opportunity for the 20 million euros plus 5 million euros of add-ons. So, that is Turam for you. He's going to be playing for the side of Juventus and in the midfield is going to be accompanied with the likes of Douglas Lewis because even McKenney is leaving. Meaning, like, look, meaning, us, sorry, the side of the side of Juventus are going to be having two midfielders into that midfield. And that is one, Thuram, two, Douglas Lewis, and there is one already known as Locatelli into the mix. So we wait and see how he's really going to be performing when his medical is done. I'll come out here and really tell you that his medical is really done and dusted. Dietmar Hamann, played for Liverpool and the Germany national team, has come out and said, I fell into the trap of Ronaldo, the team player. I think he probably would have squared... To Bruno Fernandes against Turkey, 
it is 10 or 10 years ago. I think he has to square the ball. I think he quite enjoyed it as he contributed to the goal and team success. But you almost had a feeling he thought I've been a team player for three games. It's not really my thing. He took every shot on against Slovenia. He just thinks it's about himself. If he doesn't feel that he can help the team anymore, he's got to say to the manager, you've got to you've got to make you've got to take him off. This is the most embarrassing, the most ridiculous decision I've ever seen. I've not seen it of anyone. So obviously Ronaldo is a selfish player, and I think it's all about the manager. You know, playing him 120 minutes was a shame. You know? Because he was not going and he's not giving. So, your thoughts on to Jokares or Osimhen decision soon are welcome in the comment section below. What do you make about uh, Turam to Juventus and Dietmar Hamann slating Cristiano Ronaldo? Good night. May the living to God bless you abundantly and may Allah really keep you in his safe hands. Bye-bye.